Welcome to Pride and Port Shippen. I'm your host, Mayor James Barbero. And today with me, I'll have our township municipal clerk, Khaled Medin. Khaled, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for and having welcome, me. Welcome um, to Port Shippen. Well, welcome to the township of Port Shippen's um, governmental process, uh, area. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask you a little bit of history about yourself. You went to my alma mater, Precipitant Hills High School. That's right. You grew up in town. That's right. Just like I did. And I know we talk about that, but give a little brief history of yourself to the residents of Yes, Precipitant. well, Mayor, thank you. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I grew up in this town. I uh, started, I was maybe about four years old when I moved to Parsippany. And I went to uh, Brooklawn Middle School. I went to Parsippany High School. And I went to Troy Hills Elementary School. And uh, the transition between those schools was very interesting because when I, st I lived in Troy Gardens, and when I uh, went to the elementary school, Troy Hill School, all my friends lived on the other side of town. So when I moved, when I had to go to Brooklawn, everybody was going to Central. So it was, it was, it was a very tough time in my life at that time. But, um, but yeah, so I, I went to Brooklawn, went to the Hills, and, um, after that, went to William Patterson, and then uh, I went to law school in, in Michigan. Uh, and then I came back here to Parsippany and um, worked for the state for some time. I was an executive director there. Uh, I oversaw the licensing boards. I oversaw four boards, uh, Board of Mortuary Science, a Board of Accountancy, the Board of Court Reporting, and the Cemetery Board. It was a very interesting job. I did that for about uh, three years. Um, and then I got the opportunity to work for this town. and. Um, here I am now, and it's been, it's really, uh, thus far, I've been, I've been working here as the clerk for about uh, three months, and it's, uh, it's been great. But what I find very interesting is all the experience that I've acquired throughout my time uh, as an attorney and working for the, estate, for the estate as an administrator has really helped me in this town, uh, has really helped me in this town. So um, it's, um, it's been great. No, and I know um, Port Shippany is fortunate to have you. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I'm always honest and we're honest with each other. Um, one of the, uh, when we met, I was, not that I was skeptical, but, you know, you have a law degree, which is really nice, and, um, but you never were a clerk before. And I, and I was thinking to myself, well, how's this, how's, and I called you a kid. Yeah. I said, how's this kid going to do this job? And um, you proved me wrong. I well, have to say, you've not yet. <laughs> but we're no, no, no. <laughs> you, you'll get there. You're you, you're detail oriented. You, you're concerned. You want to get things done. You don't hesitate. You don't hesitate to talk to me or the council president, and that's important in government. And I'll tell you why it's important, and I'll let you go because it's your it's, you're on my show. But um, <laughs> it's, it's your show. <laughs> it's important because communication is very important. Transparency is very important, and you're, you're very good at that. And communicating is, is really important because, you know, as, as, a, as a mayor, I like to know what's going on in the town or what's happening, what concerns, because I know people come to you as well, mm -hmm. and you really um, have shined on that. So I want to thank you. Well, thank you. I really appreciate those, those comments, Mayor. And, uh, yeah, you're right. I do believe that one of the key things to success in any organization is, is communication. Uh, where When I was an attorney and practicing law, it was important that I communicate with the partners. While I was working for the state, it was important that I communicate with the heads. And uh, here, being at the clerk's office, because at the clerk's office, we're the information hub. And and uh, we're the face of, of the town, essentially. When people come in, the first place they go to a lot of times is the clerk's office. So we essentially, the way I look at it is we represent you and we represent everybody in town hall. So anytime there's an issue or a problem that may arise, I think it's very important that you as the mayor should be aware of these things. Uh, because let's face it, if, it's not, or if we're not able to deal with it, uh, it's probably going to come to you anyway. Oh, it will. Uh, so it, it's better that you know about it than than you just get sideswiped by it. Um, and yeah, coming in was uh, was very interesting. And um, uh, you know, to be honest, because I, I was a practicing attorney, and um, I did work for the state. Coming in here, I never was a clerk, uh, so uh, there was a little bit of apprehension uh, with regards to that. And of course, with any new job, you don't know what to expect. Uh, but I was uh, confident in my skill set that I've developed throughout the years and, um, and the fact that uh, the most important thing for me was this was my town. 
Right. I mean, let's not forget, th I'm, I'm invested in Parsippany because this is all I know. I mean, for the few, for the few years I went to law school, um, but I came right back. And I had the opportunity to stay there. I had, other, I had a few job opportunities up there, but it, it, this Parsippany always pulled me back, you know. Right. Um, so, so that was really one of the, the main factors why I said, you know what, I, I would like to come and, and accept this job. Um, and do a good job for my town because uh, I was at the state, I was helping people at the state level and it, it was big picture. But coming here, I could help people on a more local level and more importantly, it's for those people that I live with. It's my residents, you know, my next door neighbor, right. you know. So it, it's honestly, so far, the experience has been fantastic. Uh, working with you has been a real pleasure. Uh, and. Um, Everybody else in Town Hall really is, is, is very, very, very good. I know when, when um, Claude and I spoke about our childhoods and all that kind of stuff, we have a very mm -hmm. similar background. I, I was just Parsimony since four years old. You've been here since four years old. You grew up in an apartment complex. I grew up in an apartment complex. And we, just, we talked about how growing up in that type of environment, it, not, it was very good. I mean, we've made a lot of friends. But it, it, it molded us into uh, what we wanted to be because I know when I grew up, I wanted to own my own house. I wanted to do this and all these types of things. Um, and it's funny how we have that same background, um, uh, you know. But, um, you know, before we get into that part, I do have to ask you this because this is yeah. important. The duties of the clerk. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because, right. I mean, we that's do, what the residents yes, know. Yes, we, we do want to talk about that. <laughs> but before, before we do get into that, and, and I'll get into that right away, I, I just do want to just comment on that. You're, you're absolutely right. Us, um, we, we do have a very similar background, which is, I think, a reason why, uh, of course, we get along. And, and, uh, but we have a very, a very good chemistry in working with yeah. each other because, yes, I came here when I was four. I, uh, I grew up uh, in the apartments. And like you said, I, you know, I believe growing up there, you, um, you really learn the value of hard work, family mm -hmm. values, and in and, 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 and short, I think it really helps to build character, yep. you know. Um, but enough about that, let's talk a little bit about the clerk's yeah. office, right? Um, so for the, the clerk's office, uh, as I was stating before, we are an information hub. So a lot of times, uh, any, if any resident needs information on this town, you can call the clerk's office. And uh, by calling that office, we will probably have the answer, but if we don't have the answer, we will get you the answer or transfer you to the department that does have the answer. So that's one of the most important things uh, to know about the clerk's office. And a few of the functions that we do at the clerk's office, one of the main things that we do is licensing. So just a little background about what we have in Parsippany here. We have, we have about 17 hotels, 43 liquor stores, uh, about 40 limousines that operate in this town, and uh, we have about 2,500 to uh, 2,800 dogs. And all these individuals or places and animals have to be licensed by the town uh, for, for many reasons. And the most important reason is for compliance. We have to ensure, for example, that all liquor stores have met all state compliance and uh, are basically okay to operate within our towns and not only state but they're complying with our rules and regulations as well one of the biggest things we do at the clerk's office um, is the dog licensing uh, I'm sure all you residents out there with dogs know uh, around that time of year one of the primary reasons why we license dogs uh, and, and maybe that's a question that comes up and sometimes I get it it can be an inconvenience for for the residents but it's really for the safety of all of us because one of the main things we want to do is ensure that animal uh, owners are responsible in ensuring that their animals have the rabies certificate, which is one of the primary things that we look for when you come to apply. So how does the application process work if you do have uh, a new dog? So you would come into the clerk's office, you would pick up an application, it's a one-page application describing the dog. You would pay a $15 fee if the dog is not neutered uh, or eighteen dollars if uh, he's eighteen dollars if he's not neutered and fifteen dollars if he's neutered. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, once you do that, you will then have to provide a rabies certificate. You do that, and your dog is licensed. So that's one of the primary functions of the clerk's office is the licensing of of individuals and animals. Uh, another thing I want to speak about with licensing is solicitors. Solicitors are the individuals that go door to door um, trying to sell things in general and I just want the residents of this town to know when all solicitors have to 
come to the clerk's office and apply for a permit. If there are solicitors in your area that come and knock on your door, I would recommend the first thing you ask them is if they have a permit and to show you the permit. If they don't, then I would advise them to go to the clerk's office and get a permit. If you see them to continue to go around your area, I would call the police and just file a report. Uh, this way we just ensure compliance. It's for the safety of everybody. We want to make sure everybody follows the rules. Um, another thing we do, a very important thing at the clerk's office, is uh, it's a very happy thing, is marriages. Uh, you can come to uh, town hall, apply at the clerk's office for a marriage license. Uh, generally the process for that is uh, you come in, it has to be 72 hours before your ceremony. Uh, you come in, you and your spouse and one witness, and um, you apply and we'll give you the oath and we'll issue the license to you after 72 hours of the application. The most important thing now, I think the biggest thing, and I think it's coming up for uh, in June, is the elections. Right. So with the elections, I don't know if you, um, if you have anything about elections, but I can just go right into that. Yeah, I mean, go, I know pretty much the process because I've been running for well, office. Look who I'm talking to, right? <laughs> but Obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't be able to probably explain it as well as you would. Well, with, uh, with, with the elections, first of all, June 7th, that's the day of the primary election. Uh, the polls open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, with elections, uh, a few things I just want to mention that are very, very important. Number one, this is the primary election. So you can vote only if you're registered for a specific party. And if you're registered for that party, that is the only party you can vote for. So in other words, if you're a registered Republican, you're going to be voting on the Republican ballot. If you're a registered Democrat, you vote on the Democratic ballot. There's no, as we say, crossing lines. That's for the general election, which is in November. The only, the only time that they can is if you're an independent or unaffiliated is the word, uh, is, the, is with association with, you can come and vote that day, but you have to declare your party that day. That is absolutely correct. Right. Um, if you are an independent, many people will tell you you can't vote, right. but that's not necessarily true. If you come to the polls that day, excuse me, you tell them you're an independent, you fill out the paperwork and you can vote. Which brings me to my other um, piece of information with regards to that. If you're looking to register for voting or um, you want to change what we call the party affiliation, which is exactly what you're speaking about, whether you're independent, you want to go to a Republican or a Democrat, or you want to go Democrat, Republican, whatever it is that you would like to do, you could come to the clerk's office. And uh, we have voter registration applications available. We also have the change of uh, party affiliation applications right. available. Um, the, just, I want everyone to be aware with that is, you come to us to register for voting, but we send that off to the county because the county board and the county clerk's office, really, they, they do a fantastic job, and they're heavily involved in the election process. Uh, so we will initiate the process, and then we'll send it off to the county to, um, to basically process the application. The other thing is I just wanted the residents to be aware, and I'm sure as they all are, we have 39 districts in, in town, and every resident is assigned to a certain district, depending on where you live. In the event that you don't know your district, give us a call and we'll be sure that we give you that information because you can't just vote anywhere. I mean, you can't, that's not, it's not how it works, right. as much as I'd like to sometimes, but you can't. Uh, so that, that really covers the registration aspect. The one last aspect for elections is uh, the poll workers. Now with poll workers, it, we get full poll workers per district. And uh, with them, you get paid $200 a day to cover the election, and you can register as a poll worker at the clerk's office as well. Uh, but again, because the county clerk's office is heavily involved, we initiate the process. In the event that you'd like to apply and become a poll worker, you really have to do it this month because the classes are being held this month. And what do I mean when I say the classes? Every poll worker has to go through a training because, uh, you know, election, it's, it's a fundamental right, and you want to ensure that everyone knows exactly what they're doing because it's, it's a great responsibility, you know, and I appreciate all the poll workers and thank all the poll workers for doing this because it's, 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 it's really, really a big responsibility on their shoulders. So we, we require that every poll worker takes a class. The classes are being held in May, and um, the class is good for two years. So once you take the class, you're okay for two years, you would just uh, apply to the, every year you have to apply to the clerk's office, 
And um, after two years, you have to recertify. What we mean by that is just you go back and reattend the class. And uh, you would work, you have to start. The only thing about the poll workers is the hours, because you have to be <laughs> at the site at 5.15 a.m. So, um, so I, think, I think that covers it for the election, the election part of it um, when it comes to that. The, the other thing with the clerk's office is, and you're heavily involved in this process as well, uh, as the mayor, is uh, the, the meetings, the council meetings right. that we have. Uh, the council meetings, we hold two council meetings a month. <coughs> one is called the agenda meeting and one is called the regular meeting, semantics. But um, at the council meeting, what we really do, the mayor's involved, the council members, we have the township attorney, we have myself and the business administrator along with the chief municipal financial officer. Uh, we talk about laws that need to be passed and uh, we talk about any issues that the um, town has or has to deal with with regards to the public. But very important with, with this specific meeting is the public hearing aspect. And, and I don't think many residents are, are, are aware of this. Um, every meeting, at every meeting we have, we have public hearing. And what that means is uh, members of the public, primarily residents, could come and speak at anything they would like to speak about, any issues of concerns as it relates to the town. Uh, not many residents are aware of this, that they could come and voice their opinion there. Uh, so I just wanted the residents to be aware of that right. as well. And also, other members, not just of the public of Parsippany, um, of other towns in the past have come to voice objections, not just in uh, council meetings, <coughs> but planning and zoning and board meetings as well. But also, you're the custodian of records. Yes, uh, that is... Um, that is a great responsibility. Uh, yeah. uh, with regards to being the custodian, it's, um, it's a great job. What, what, let me back up with, with regards to being the custodian of records. Th as a town, one of the key things we do is conserving records. Why do we conserve the records? It's because it is the history of our, of our wonderful town. And these records go back, I mean, many, many, many years ago. I mean, I saw a record from I think it was uh, 1902, so it's, it's amazing. So it preserves our society's records, and we know from all these what the history is and what we're going to do. Um, so with being the custodian of records, one of the biggest things is ensuring that we have these records restored. Right? So we have two, two places where we store these records, uh, and, and really the one main place is the community center. And uh, we, we make sure that all the records are stored there, kept in a safe place. We go through a destruction process uh, every six years or so where we destroy records that don't really have pertinent value. We have ha records that are for historical knowledge, and those we preserve always because that's our foundation. Uh, but we also have records that are basically for business that we conduct on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and with that, we we destroy those because if we kept all that paper, I mean, we wouldn't know where to put it after a right, while. It's, it's uh, so, and, and, and in the destruction process, it's a very rigorous process where we do have to go and obtain state permission to ensure that we're not destroying anything that we shouldn't destroy. Right. Um, uh, the other thing is we do, ha we do process OPRAs. And with OPRAs, OPRA really means the Open Public Records Act. And essentially what that allows is any uh, resident, if they so choose, um, would like any type of public information, they would put in an OPRA request. With an OPRA request, when you do put in that request, we have seven days to respond to you and give you the information. And in our town, we're very good about processing this request and giving, getting it to you in a timely manner. Uh, sometimes some requests are a little voluminous, so we do need to uh, request an extension and the residents have been fantastic and you know we all work together I mean we all want the same thing for this town and the most important thing for for us and the custodian of records and OPRA is the transparency of government right. and 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 I think the most I th in my time here I think uh, in working with you and working with the council and working with the staff I think we've it's w in my opinion uh, a key place and it, it can be it can be shown as an example for showing transparency we we, we really try to uh, really accommodate any requests that any of the residents have right. now of course there may be some requests that we can't accommodate and uh, there are legalities of that that we don't need to get into today right. and most of the legalities uh, that we pass on to the township attorney that's right that's exactly well. right I mean you know it's uh, we are I, I we're very transparent in Port mm -hmm. I mean to, to the point where if it's not a litigated matter, 
you know, we're, you know, and you do a great job with that. I know it's, um, you do get a lot of um, open requests and um, you always try to accommodate the residents or anybody, which is, which is great. I mean, you know. And, and, and with, with the transparency, I, I definitely would like to compliment your website. If you go to the website, you just look at that website alone, uh, it, it tells you everything that's going on. You can access uh, any types of records. You can access minutes now. Uh, you can access budgets. You can access almost anything. And, and one thing I know about you uh, in the times that we've spent, and I think you do a great job as mayor in this because I think it's a, a very important role for the mayor to, to do, is you have an open door policy, not only with the staff, but with the residents. Uh, there's been many times residents have come to my office and uh, I've went and I've discussed it with, I've come and knocked on your door and you would see the resident or one of your, uh, your confidential aide or your secretary would go in and they'd speak to them and they'd make sure that the issues are solved or they would, uh, they would at least give them the attention they deserve. Right. I mean, so you, you're not going to always have the answers, but no. if you don't meet with them, talk with them, you know, the residents and hey, listen, the, that's, that's when you said it, you worked for the state. I, I would never, I mean, I, I would, I don't know if I'd ever want to move up to freeholder assembly. We actually work in the towns, and I'm, I'm, an, I'm an elected official in a town that I live in. Mm -hmm. So when you live in a town where, you know, you know you're an elected official or you're a clerk, um, not that you're a target, but, you know, you have to vote on things that affect not only the residents, affects you as well. Right. And remember, when you vote on something or something, residents or say a resident doesn't like it they'll come to your door and you know and that's why i have the the policy that way because i i'm a firm believer that you know you can't you can't ignore situations but as long and i was raised as long as you which in your heart you feel is the right thing to do explain that to to anybody a resident whatever and you know they always go away respected not always agreeing but respecting you for that and I, and I know you're the same way, so. No, absolutely, and, uh, and, and, and I would have to, you know, I, I'd like to make a comment about that. You know, you live here, and you're the mayor here, and there are a lot of times working in government, I've worked in, in many different forms of government, and, and one thing I, I would definitely like to commend you, because as a resident, you have to make decisions that, and I don't know whether residents of this town recognize this or not, that affect you as well. Uh, so you might make a decision that may negatively impact, or somebody may think it negatively impacts, right. you know, but people don't realize, well, you're living it as well. So you're really doing what's best for the town. And that's one thing I admire about you as mayor is you do what's right. Even if, it's, if it may negatively or what people may have the perception as negative impact at that time, uh, you still will do what's right. Um, and, and I think that that is a really... Uh, really admirable quality because it's not easy it's not easy being in the public eye so no it's not because I'm starting to learn that now I could tell yeah. you that because for me working at the state uh, working at the state I really didn't have that that um, throws me off too sometimes <laughs> <laughs> working at the state I really my age dancing <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't have the that this kind of exposure sometimes with the state where here you you really deal with the residents on right. a day-to-day -day basis at the state I made decisions right but if someone had an issue it never came back to me because we don't have that kind of exposure so working here it, you do have that exposure and eh, sometimes it's tough but it's also good and this is good about I mean when I th listen, I will tell you this about Parsippany, and you and I have talked about it. We have a great community. Yeah, absolutely. When, when, when it's not just uh, me being a mayor or you being a clerk. If, if one of our residents, something happens to them or a family member, this community pulls together. Correct. I've, I've never seen anything like it in, in my life. In seven years as mayor, from floods to hurricanes to, you know, individuals losing their children or whatever, this community, for some reason, comes together and becomes one and takes care of everybody and that's why I love it. That's right. And it's a diverse community and and I always tell everybody this. If the world could see how Parsippany gets along and in, in its diversity, then the world would be a better place. Well that's correct. And we do do everything we can in, in my time I can tell you um, working for this town, I know we do whatever we can to try to help out our residents. Right. And an example of that was yesterday, yep. right? Oh, yes, with, it was with, perfect. With, with, the the marriage, with the marriage certificate. One thing I'd like to, um, to state to you is 
there's a 72 hour waiting period with marriage but if you come in and there's a circumstance we will work with you to try to accommodate right. you um and you did that yesterday and i appreciate it absolutely absolutely that's what we do it. for our residents mayor you know we're all a team and we're right. here to help the residents um and that's the number one goal how old are you now i mean <laughs> my my age yeah you're right 33 33 yeah. you still got all your hair that's right i was done at 26. so far so far not right. what i'm hoping i'm hoping i can keep it till about <laughs> About 50. If, I, if, if it lasts till about 50, 55, I'm, hair, I'm but, okay. Uh, but, uh, why do I have I to go gray I think it's one of the better quality. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being on the show today. Mayor, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, and thank you for tuning in once again for Pride and Parsippany. And until next time, God bless Parsippany and God bless you all. Thank you.